Do do do, Destiny this. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And today's topic is gonna be about multilingual problems. Like I know, there are people over here who are also multilingual, and you have problems, but they are not writer problems. So today's video is gonna be a little bit funny. Some of you may relate, some of you might not. But anyways, here's a pop quiz, okay? So this is a screenshot for something that I've written for Time Cross Academy, and I would like to hear your opinion on which one fits better. Option one, contrary to his looks and personality, the shark merman was actually a master of both the pen and the sword. Option two, contrary to his looks and personality, the shark merman was actually a master of both pen and sword. Option three. Contrary to his looks and personality, the shark merman was actually a master of the pen and sword. They kind of look similar, and they kind of mean the same thing. Here's my struggle. So basically, I don't know which one sounds correct and which one I should be using. So I went to take a poll. I'll give you like a second or so. Please let me know what you think in the comments, and we'll see who agrees with which option. So the one that I actually ended up using is option 1 because it is grammatically correct. Option 2 by far was the most popular vote for some reason and option 3 was not very popular. Although there were votes, so everybody had a different opinion and we don't know which one's correct. So option 1 is actually the one that I used eventually because it's grammatically correct with the articles in place. So the reason why I you know brought this up is because sometimes if you're multilingual and by the way English is my main language I forget it doesn't happen often but I do forget some words I completely like you know just have a blank out moment and if you're curious I actually speak three languages I speak English being the most fluent followed by Chinese which is kind of broken and last but not least, Japanese, which is more fluent, but I have lesser vocabularies. So yeah, those are the languages that I speak. And when I was writing Time Cross Academy, I don't know what went wrong. My English function was broken that day. So while I still technically know all the spelling and grammar, I was having a hard time. Like if you give me 15 minutes, okay, 1-5, I can churn out like about 500 words on a good day. But my English function was so broken, I struggled with 200 words that day. And everything just didn't make sense grammatically or even vocabulary. I just forgot words, completely forgot words that existed. So that was a struggle. That was one of the meltdowns and breakdowns and a problem that multilingual writers may face because I know I have a lot of writer friends with web novel and they come from all over the place. So I have Indian writer friends, I have Filipino writer friends, I have writer friends from, I don't know, uh, where else? Brazil, South Africa, things like that. And we have our mother tongues, you see. So writing in English, not all of us use that as a first language. In Singapore, this is our first language. But in other countries, no, not so much. So I'm kind of blessed in a way, but you know, it's not exactly easy. So the second thing about writing, um, being a multilingual writer, is that you tend to know other languages that has better phrases for example why i struggled with this uh, master of both the pen and the sword is actually a chinese phrase which kind of means that you're good at studies and martial arts um trying to describe a person as an all-rounder but i struggled with this so much basically because Firstly, I tried to literally translate it over and it just completely didn't fit the story context because this is a shock moment. A shock moment, firstly, would not be able to wield like, you know, they don't fight with swords. Like, you know, does it make sense? First, first and foremost, the context is wrong. So I was like, okay, I want to make it to, you know, something that's more, mm, more, more suitable to the context. But eventually I, I went to Google and I was like, okay, give me a translation for Wen Wu Shuangxuan. Because I, I cannot, I cannot, okay, Wen Wu is studies and martial arts. Shuang Xuan means being good at both. So I cannot just put that in. It doesn't make sense. This is an English story and I have English readers and people are just, you know, not educated in Chinese the way I am. So I had to find another way. And they put uh, master of both, uh, both pen and sword. 
But, you know, the articles are not exactly correct in that translation, so I had to find something else to put it in, which is what I did. And, <laughs> yeah, this is the vote that I had to take. So if you look at my stream, uh, which I actually fast-forwarded, there's one section which someone asked me on Twitch, uh, a writer friend asked me on Twitch, I need help with a word. I forgot the word that I was looking for. Okay, so I usually help a lot of writers. Uh, when they have questions and things like that. But I don't know why that day my English function was so broken. And I was writing a BL series, a Yaoi series, a boys love series. And they asked me, I'm looking for a word that starts with a D. I want to describe shoulders. They told me that they wanted to describe shoulders at a later part. So the first thing that came to mind while I was writing BL series and it starts with a D, you can kind of tell where my mind went. <laughs> you can never ask a Yaoi writer what word starts with a D <laughs> while they are writing BL because <laughs> the answer should be very obvious. And if you if you still haven't figured out, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. But anyway, so I, I found the word eventually with my broken English in my head. The, the function was broken, but... um. The word is actually drooped, so drooping shoulders, droop, D-R-O-O-P. Uh, if you don't know that word, please go check it out. It's a, it's a fairly common word, but I don't know why that day the English function was just broken for everyone. <laughs> it was an interesting night, it was an interesting stream, but let's move on. So, not finding an accurate translation is one of the problems. Suddenly forgetting words is another problem. You forget your words, you forget your spelling, you forget your grammar, you don't even know what you're writing anymore at some point of time. And suddenly, English is just like a whole new language that you've never seen before. It's like, oh my gosh, we have to decrypt what I've just written. That's the editing process after your English breaks down and you try to write a chapter. <laughs> so I had to stop because that was obviously not a good chapter. And then... The last thing that I want to say, multilingual writers suffer from this. It's called forgetting the language that you're using. For some reason, this is actually a true story, okay? Some writers have a habit of writing and then they suddenly, like, you know, their, their formal English function is broken and then they just go back to texting, texting style, like, Y-O-U, oh, they just put a letter U there and then they move on. <laughs> And, and they just completely missed it out. I don't know if you are that kind of writer and if you are guilty of it, but this is the one interesting thing that I think multilingual writers suffer from the most. You forget the language that you're using. If I'm using English and I suddenly have this like, you know, mental breakdown and the English function is completely broken, I'll start writing it in a different language. I don't even know how the word slipped in there. It's Chinese. And it's not even Chinese characters in pinning form. It's like Romanji. I was like, how, how even, what is this monstrosity? Like it, yeah, and the spell check sometimes doesn't pick it out for you. I don't know what's wrong with the spell check, but I don't trust a spell check. Which is why I'm often recruiting proofreaders. I keep saying, if you are good at English, if you are decent at English, if you can do a better job than the spell check does, please offer your services if you have time to help me proofread some of my works and series. Because... I can't afford to pay a proofreader. Web novels mean that you are constantly generating content. You don't really have time to, you know, go polish it yourself and check for quality. You need someone else to do that for you. And this is one of the things that I think is interesting about being a multilingual author. Like, you don't see a lot of these kind of funny stuffs behind the scenes because people don't tell you that. But I'm saying that writers have very interesting behind the scene lives. And this is just one of it. So yeah, if you're a multilinguist like me as well, let me know what kind of languages you actually speak, you actually know, and the kind of funny problems that you run into, okay? That's all for my not-so-short video, but it's considered shorter than the rest of the videos. I think I'm getting better at this time management thing. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to check out all the links in my description below. I am still looking for Patreons, so check that out as well, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>